Wilson is a small town. At one point in time, it was the world's biggest tobacco supplier and things like that. Everybody knows everybody there. I like that aspect of it, but there's certain things in Wilson that they can get better at, and one of those things is the hospital. This picture is... What? I open TikTok, and this is literally the first thing I see. All right, guys, I think I may have just found a side hustle that has huge potential to earn money. Hassan Parker realizing as long as he doesn't literally say, I think women are inferior beings, he can be as misogynistic as he likes because he's hot. And nobody is doing it. All right, guys, I think I may have just found a... Yeah, and I still watch the JC's videos. What about it? Just for a few regular things, just going in and then never came out, basically. My father fell in the ICU, and he fell because his arms weren't restrained. The bed alarm wasn't on, so he pulled the tube out of his throat, stood up, yelled, fell. That's where the nurse found him after however many minutes in a pool of blood when he fell. Wilson Medical Center is the only hospital serving Wilson County, North Carolina. After being bought by a private equity behemoth, doctors, nurses, and patients have told me the hospital is putting profit over care to an extreme degree. It's nothing more than a place to die now, several Wilsonians have told me, and a clear and sobering view of the dismal state of rural healthcare in America. This is an extraction operation. It's a billionaire factory. And they're doing that by essentially mining the wealth of poor rural communities. So many people I know will not go to Wilson Hospital if they can help it. If you're profit driven and you're not concerned about patient care, the recipe is exactly what we have in Wilson and it's a disaster. Doctors I've spoken with say chronic understaffing has diminished this once respectable hospital into a glorified for-profit urgent care. I've been an ER doctor for two decades in more hospitals than you can comprehend and Wilson is the worst. Corners are being cut and in my opinion, patient safety is- Guys, this is just a consequence of for-profit healthcare, baby. If you're not profitable, if your hospital is not profitable and rural areas, hospitals, well, no hospital is really profitable. Let's be real. They just like, uh, if, especially if they can't get like a lot of elective surgeries, um, you know, that's the, that's where a lot of hospitals make their money in general, but they also make their money with like people who have the capacity to pay for healthcare and have the capacity to pay for the actual fucking uh, insanely overpriced bills that they charge because the American, the American healthcare system is like fundamentally broken. Okay. It's broken because of the for-profit hospital care, uh, that they have. It's broken because, um, the, there's a really overpriced mediator. There's a really overpriced mediator, uh, industry called, uh, the insurance industry. Pharmaceuticals can charge whatever the fuck they want to, even the government that's buying uh, pharmaceuticals in bulk, right? So even after all of that, what ends up happening in hospitals basically is that uh, you you pay seventy five dollars for a fucking Hall's like you know cough drop. Uh, if you look at your itemized receipt, if you can get your itemized receipt, the reason why you're paying for that is because twelve other people have no capacity to pay for that, so they just didn't pay for it at all. So they have to offset the cost both to your insurance and also to you because you have the capacity to pay. And instead of doing that, we could just completely revamp the system and uh, create a gigantic pool in the same way that insurance works because that's how it's supposed to work, right? You can create a gigantic pool in the form of fucking taxes and, and pay for all this shit up front and that everyone would pay for all this shit up front so that we wouldn't have to have these sorts of issues when we go to the fucking hospitals. But we can't do that. Instead, we play this song and dance. We play this song and dance over and over and over again. And now, rural areas, you know, especially like super Republican, super red areas, turn around and, and, and advocate for, uh, you know, more deregulation and, and uh, more tax breaks and all this other shit. They fucking hate socialism, blah, blah, blah. And then they can't get any fucking adequate health coverage or health care in general because these hospitals are just not profitable. And if we had the same attitude that we have, the same capitalist attitude that we have towards hospitals, uh, if we had that same exact attitude towards roads, or if we had that same exact attitude towards the U.S. Postal Service, 
Those motherfuckers living in rural areas would not have roads and they would not have any sort of utilities and they would certainly not even be able to get their fucking medicine in the mail. That's the worst part about this, okay? Roads, hospitals, and even shelter should not be for profit, okay? These are things that you fundamentally need for survival. Is being compromised. Every single day, I dreaded going to work. The private equity business model is fundamentally incompatible with sound health care that serves patients. And that incompatibility inevitably turns deadly. I come here all the time. On my 21st birthday, I came and I took a fireball shot with him. <laughs> and um, it stayed here ever since March 12th, even through all the storms and everything. I don't know how, but it stayed here. Whenever it showed on his death certificate that it was blunt force trauma to the head, that's when I, I really realized, you know, it wasn't because of him. It was because of neglect. It was because some people weren't doing what they were supposed to do. There was supposed to be a bed sitter, or if not a bed sitter, a nurse was always supposed to be at her station. Um, none of that happened. Whenever I found that out, I was just, I was shocked. I, and I was, honestly, I was kind of mad. I was angry. Wilson Medical Center recently made headlines after federal regulators threatened to pull their Medicare funding, an extremely rare move. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services outlined the immediate jeopardy at the hospital linked to two patient deaths. You know, there's all kinds of instances where I think that the patient is not first on the list. And that's what my concern is. And that's why I said it's something to the county commissioners. William Ferris is an attorney in Wilson. He spoke up about the report at a July 11th County Board of Commissioners meeting when it didn't. The closest hospital to me are 45 minutes away. One has been bought and sold four different times over the past couple of years. I fucking hate living in a rural area. Yup. Why? Because it's not profitable. Turns out some of these things should not be left uh, up to the profit motive. When will we learn? I don't know. Make the agenda. We're in immediate jeopardy for losing Medicare funding. That's less than three. Genuine question. Does public health care still incentivize innovation? And if so, how? I want to know the talking points. Of course it does, man. America's novel chemical compound creation per capita is actually much lower than other countries with socialized medicine. Okay. Medicine is not even created inside of fucking labs uh, in, in private corporations. Novel chemical compounds and, and new medicine is usually created by publicly funded research or wealthy benefactor funded research inside of colleges. Okay? This incentivization for innovation has historically been completely false. Uh, in contemporary society, you can look to a country like Cuba, which... Um, takes a lot of pride in having a robust healthcare infrastructure, a robust uh, publicly funded, uh, you know, uh, uh, medical community that uh, has even found uh, that is even that e currently has a working lung cancer vaccine, for example. Okay, in spite of the unjustifiable and I would say violent uh, uh, crime against humanity blockade that the United States, the the world's largest imperial global hegemonic power has placed upon them so it's just ridiculous uh you look to people who have created insulin for example the person who who invented insulin patented it for a dollar wanted to give it away for free the idea that like innovation is linked to the profit motive is a silly lie that capitalists have pushed for in perpetuity okay But it doesn't even bear itself out in the data. It doesn't bear itself out throughout history. And it certainly has never bared itself out even in the fucking data itself. Three percent of the hospitals, less than three percent of the hospitals that are surveyed have that problem. So let me just be real clear. The doctors and, and nurses they're not, they're not responsible for anything that's happening. My problem is with the management of the hospital all the way up to Apollo. Apollo. Oh, one other thing I will tell you. A lie that capitalist corporations and capitalism defenders will also tell you is the innovation within uh, private corporations, like private pharmaceutical corporations. 
That innovation is just new mechanisms of trying to fucking maintain a patent so you stay profitable, okay? The only innovation that these pharmaceutical, these giant pharmaceutical corporations bring to the table is new ways of sitting on pre-existing patents that were sold to said companies, okay? That's it. That's it. It's a delivery mechanism. That, uh, one, one simple trick that they main, uh, one simple trick that, that Big Pharma uses regularly is um, delivery mechanisms. They will find new ways. They will find new delivery methods. And that's all the R&D that they're doing so that they can sit on the patent for another fucking eight years. You are biggest fraud. You don't deserve your platform, in my opinion. I agree. I should be telling you what you want to hear, which is that uh, you're right. Medical technology is, is profound. Uh, it's really important. And the only time it happens is inside of private corporations. And yes, your father should die because he couldn't get access to insulin in the United States of America. And I should tell you why it's okay, because he's a loser and he didn't work hard enough. And if you're poor, if you're brokey, if you're brokey and you're poor, then you deserve it. Right? That's what I should tell you. Is that what you want to hear in a, in a nicer way? Some of you motherfuckers would rather not hear the reality because it feels really sad and scary to like finally recognize it. And you rather would just want someone to tell you, uh, you know, bedtime stories. You can get that anywhere else. Why do you come here for the first fucking time? You know, maybe you are right. Okay, thanks. Why do you come here for the first fucking time? You can get that anywhere else. You go to CNN, they'll tell you that. Anywhere. All the liberal outlets will tell you the exact same thing. But why the fuck do you come here and get mad? Global management, one of the biggest private equity firms in the world, bought around 70 life point hospitals, including the one in Wilson, in 2018 for $5.6 billion. The deal was part of a much bigger trend. Private equity firms plowed $750 billion into American healthcare institutions between 2010 and 2020. That easy profit is what drives private equity to invest in healthcare. It creates this appealing landscape because it's somewhat of a wild, wild west. Olivia Smith is an attorney with Wallace and Graham. For what it's worth, it's really hard to make safe new medicines, academic or industry. Yeah, no shit. Of course it's fucking hard. But that, that doesn't factor in, like, uh, the profit incentive at all. Her experience in suing private equity-owned healthcare facilities has made her very familiar with the private equity playbook. What they often do is form a... I just did a pharmaceutical conference where they flat out admitted this. They created a new delivery mechanism for eye medicine so they could keep the patent. Of course. When I say stuff like this, I'm not pulling this information out of my ass. I'm telling you. I've been doing this for many, many fucking years, okay? And I don't have the American Enterprise Institute to fucking write talking points for me so I could just sit around and, like, churn that pro-capitalist propaganda out in the same way that motherfucking Ben Shapiro and Steven Crowder do. This is well-researched shit. Yeah. This is what they do. They're R&D... Their budgets go to marketing and their budgets go to R&D. R&D that is, it revolves entirely around reinstituting their patents because they created a new mechanism, a delivery system. Another thing that they will do is if a patent is about to fucking, if they have no new delivery system, and if the patent is about to, uh, to be released to the public, so now there's going to be low-cost generic alternatives available, then they won't even fucking do any sort of genuine testing. They won't even fucking try to figure out a new way of using the medication. Bro, my friend's dad patented a boat propeller for said company and he made zero dollars through the company making profit on boat engines for decades to come. Corporation or an LLC or any kind of corporate form and the legal owner will be the corporate form, not the two owners. So they have insulated themselves from any connection between the operations and the healthcare and themselves. Often we see the actual property that the health facility. One of the biggest barriers for rural healthcare is attracting an adequate workforce, and a lot of states have come 
have to come up with a rural scholarship incentive programs just to get doctors after residencies to work in rural areas. I'm one of these recipients. You know what another fucking gigantic problem is? And this is something I talk about regularly, like all the fucking time. And Bernie Sanders mentioned it as well. Usually talk about if you want to be a fucking doctor, other countries have already created a system where you can you can, you know, still make a fuckload of money, maybe not as much money as you can in America, but you make a fuckload of money by saving a fuckload of money. You don't have to be debted, indebted. Uh, you don't have to be fucking $300,000, $400,000 in debt to just become a doctor, to become a, you know, uh, important part of the workforce, a necessary part of the workforce. The only way to solve that is literally by fucking making that education free. Okay? You have to do that. You have to abolish student debt, and you have to absolutely make university specifically, especially for uh, medical degrees, free. And then because the government's paying for it, then the government allows, uh, the government can also say, hey, you got to go work at a fucking rural hospital for two years. You know what I mean? You got to do your residency at a rural hospital. We will pay for your cost of living. We will help you, but you have to do it. That is how places like Turkey operate, okay? And there's so much more corruption in places like that, but that is how it works. And you're supposed to do that, and plenty of people would 100% go that route if they had the opportunity to go that route, okay? But of course, once again, once again, these are programs that like literally third world countries have, by the way. What I'm describing is not something that is completely insane. What I'm describing is normal process even in fucking developing nations, okay? If they can do it, then we, the wealthiest nation on earth, can do it as well. Thank you, Junior Turtle, for the 10 gifted subs, allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads. FDR did this 90 years ago. This is quite literally why minimum. I can only wish that everyone has had or have a fulfilled life as I have had and continue to every day. Wage was established with the New Deal. With the collapse of the 1929 stock market and war in Europe, FDR had a mess to inherit, and this is how he fixed it. Time for some history, kids. A second bill of rights. That's the New Deal. Under which a new basis of security and prosperity can be established for all regardless of station or race or free civil rights among these are the right to a useful and remunerative job the right to earn enough to provide adequate food and clothing i can't watch this guy i just like tiktok kills me a little bit okay no disrespect if that dude's a, a fan or whatever but like i just can't okay um there's little evidence that certain medications that have been used to curb nicotine addiction can also help people curb their alcohol addiction and cravings, but literally alcohol rules America, so there's no real funding or research on it. How sad is that? Imagine a patch that could help alcoholics. That would be amazing. Damn, I did not know that. <sighs> R&D in the majority of s &E disciplines is performed solely with the outlook of creating patentable inventions. Whether that research was funded through the government, public, through the private industry is mostly irrelevant, as you mentioned. You're wrong about pharma. I work in pharma. Okay, shut up, Stryker. The facility is on, put into a separate LLC, and... Um we just, like, we completely... Here's the thing. We completely fucking let go of the notion that, like... God, this is such a fucking classic... I mean, I, I hate that... I mean, I hate to use theory hour here, but it's it's the... What's the fucking... What was it? I think it was Marx who said it, but it was, like... Greed under capitalism and thinking that human greed is the primary motivator under a capitalist organization of the economy and it's a part of human nature is kind of like saying that black lung is a part of human nature because all you know is working in the fucking coal mines. Okay? I don't know if it was Marx. I forget who said that. But regardless, like, yes, if you only work in the fucking coal mines... If you only work in the coal mines, your life and your reality is like, yeah, everyone's got shitty lungs, okay? Everyone's got shitty lungs. Yeah, that's just a normal part of the process. Even if greed is an integral part of human nature, 
Human nature is literally all about overcoming nature. It's not natural to live in fucking sky skyscrapers, and yet we take that for granted. Okay? The idea that human beings can only be motivated by selfish desire, by greed, is silly as fuck. Especially when there are so many other alternative reasons for why people do the things that they do and throughout history they have proven that there are other reasons as to why innovation has prospered the motherfucker who made the wheel okay the motherfucker who invented the wheel was like oh this is good this is good didn't do it because he was like oh this way you give me meat he did it because it was like this is going to improve society maybe i'll get some fucking cave girl pussy okay There are other motivating principles. Marx had this quote that it hit the nail on the head pretty well. It is not the consciousness of men that determines their being, but on the contrary, their social being that determines their consciousness. The wheel would have been invented 10,000. <laughs> the wheel would have been invented 10,000 years earlier if cavemen had patents and LLCs. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. Um, owned by the same owners, of course. However, they then lease themselves that building. There's also various ways that they can further vertically integrate through pharmacies, through staffing companies, through housekeeping and hospitality companies. Consistently, your worst point, humans are animals and many animals are just as, if not more advanced than humans. We are going to off ourselves before spending very long on the earth. What? Dude, I, that, that's awesome. That is, dude, I love that. That's a good take. Companies, that's a unique one. All of one. these can be owned by the same individuals, theoretically, but placed into separate corporate forms and transact in business with one another and so oh it was andrew collier to look at hum to look at people in a capitalist society and cl conclude that human nature is egoism is like looking at people in a factory where pollution is destroying their lungs and saying that it is human nature to cough really it's just a, a kind of musical chairs of moving money around from one pocket to another we asked Olivia to look at the ownership chart for Wilson Medical Center to help us better understand how the private equity model has affected the hospital. In an ideal world, only the bottom entity would exist. And I say that because that's the medical provider, that is the healthcare provider. In reality, it's this top entity that's making those decisions by virtue of setting budgets and providing set amounts of money that that the bottom entity can actually spend on patient care. And so that distance, what it does is it entails severe budget cuts. Apollo financed much of the transaction to buy LifePoint with so-called sub-investment grade debt, junk bonds, which came with punishing interest payments, driving the hospital chain's annual interest expenses from about $150 million in 2017 to $578 million in 2019. The deal has already paid dividends to Apollo investors who booked a $1.6 billion profit last year when the private nice. equity firm sold LifePoint from one of its funds, Fund 8. Perfect system. Perfect system. No, no changes necessary. Don't change this. How could you say? How could you say that there's anything wrong with this? And also, there's no other way to change it. There's no, there's no other system that could ever work, okay? Yeah, so if you live in a rural area, get fucked and die. Eat shit and fucking die. You're gonna die. The only fucking healthcare you can get is from the vet, okay? And also, the only healthcare you can get is, if you're lucky, there's an EMT service in your, in your region, okay? There you go. That's it. And it's quite literally happening because some guy out there that you're gonna never meet is is increasing their profit margin, okay? Putting in an extra fucking dollar. 
in their portfolio that they have diversified. That is fucking crazy. It just, I don't know, man. I don't know. I feel like once you, once you realize that capitalism is, is creating dogmatic behavior that inherently justifies its existence and that like, uh, there is a way to just kind of see outside of that, uh, that, that, uh, reality that is you, that you've been conditioned into believing it, it just it breaks your brain when you look at this you're like this is crazy this is so crazy to me bro emt can't just become providers of a patient yeah no shit i know except that's the only fucking health care that a lot of rural areas have and it is a death cult And the rural areas keep voting Republican? Of course they do, because the Republican Party is like offering them at least fun times by owning the libs or whatever, okay? That's why. To another fun nine. But the money to pay off the junk bond holders that made it all possible has to come from somewhere, and it usually comes from the budgets designed to keep a hospital running. This situation happening here is, is extreme, but it's happening throughout the country. Dr. Mitchell Lee is an ER doctor in North Carolina. He also founded the group Take Medicine Back, aimed at exposing the practices of private equity in medicine. These private equity firms have realized they can do the billing without doing the rest of it. There's no innovation as far as good patient care, there's innovation in how to extract wealth. And what that translates to is decreased staffing, do more with less, and predatory billing in a healthcare system that's already non-transparent. This just takes it to the next level, it accelerates things. And that acceleration, unfortunately, can lead to hospital closures, devastating rural communities. When healthcare fails, private equity firms don't take a hit. They made money either way. Heads I win, tails you lose. You can see the cycle of extraction, deterioration, and failure on display in Wilson. Wilson is a growing community and instead of the hospital growing, is shrinking. The biggest thing in the hospital, it seems, is the ER. And, uh, and that's not the way it should be. Every time I visited the hospital, the ER was packed. The rest of the hospital, however, was eerily empty. Doctors told me the hospital, which is licensed for 294 beds, was caring for just around 50 patients. That in and of itself is, is sort of the deterioration. Now, does that happen at other hospitals? Absolutely. But in Wilson, the reason is, is because they brought those numbers down. And the reason that is, is because they found their happy medium. They found their corporate money. As for the unsafe conditions threatening the hospital's Medicare funding, CMS inspectors determined during a follow-up that Wilson no longer posed an immediate jeopardy to patients. But they found so many more violations that the agency postponed its decision on Wilson's Medicare termination to September 22nd. When Apollo comes in, it's profit over patient care. If Wilson doesn't find a solution, the community could soon be the latest victim in a dangerous trend. At least 140 rural hospitals have closed since 2010, according to the Shep Center for Health Services Research. Experts say hundreds more are on the verge of closing due to financial distress. But that distress is not purely a natural occurrence. A 2018 GAO study found that for-profit hospitals like the one in Wilson accounted for just 11% of rural hospitals in 2013, but 36% of rural hospital closures through 2017. Ferris and many Wilson community leaders believe they may have legal standing to evict private equity from their hospital. That's because something called a reverter clause in state law governing the sale of public hospitals to for-profit entities requires Apollo to provide same or like services to what the hospital offered prior to the sale. That clearly hasn't happened. This has got to change, and we've got to look at the reverter clause. Capitalism is the problem, he said, as his stream zoomed out to allow for multinational corporation banner ads, runs manipulative ads every hour, and extracts value from workers and gives percentage to global 0.001% capitalism, begs for subs from lower class viewers for personal gain. Hashtag hypocrite. Love that. This man is fucking brilliant. Wait, you have Donald Trump. You, Donald Trump is your in your PFP. What do you mean? Ban them for the essay? No, dude. This was a pet. We're we're fucking. We are literally. I'm keeping this one. We're keeping this one. We're keeping this one. This guy's got some good ideas. He got me. This chatter worked on this. Oh no. Yeah. No. It's it's he he.
thought it he thought it out. That's awesome. They aren't saying it's bad. They just don't like the hypocrisy, Lamau. Okay, well there there's no hypocrisy then. Okay, I'm I'm a capitalist. I love capitalism. Owned. Get owned. And we can't afford. We cannot afford to let it go on. Either they No, I thought it was an ad break debate as well. We ran the ad break already. But uh, get fucked. They've got to change the way they do business or they don't need to be in Wilson. Good, you're converted. Okay. Can I still advocate against capitalism now? I'm a capitalist, but I think capitalism is bad. There you go. And you know what? If you fucking hated me, oh man, you, you know what I would hate the most actually? Use that energy for good, okay? If you, if, oh my God, you know, you know what would be really fucking good? Oh dude. You know what would make me really mad? You organize your workplace, okay? Oh my God. If you voted for like politicians that would increase, uh, you know, taxes on corporations, oh my God, that would really disrupt my life. Oh, that would make me so mad. Please. That would make me mauled so hard. You would own me, dude. You'd own the libs. Tyler Spark, thank you for the 10 get the subs. MacTac, thank you for the five get the subs. 